Can I ask the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Bouchon? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey, for being here. I, I just want to say I don't think I don't see this as particularly partisan. And the hearing, I think, is completely appropriate and relevant to the American people across political ideology. As I, I would respectfully disagree with my Democrat colleagues and some of the comments they've made. And I would just like to say this. Ironically, in my view, they're the ones most likely to want heavy-handed government intervention into your industry. And I would argue that people like me, Republicans, are trying to help you avoid it. So take that for what, what it's worth. Um, you know, you've implied and you've said that Twitter's taking all these different actions to improve uh, all the things that you're doing as it relates to algorithms and other things. What's your timeline? And, and I know you've said that this is an ongoing process, right? You're never going to, you're not going to get a checkered flag, right? But what's your timeline for, make, for getting some of this really done? We, um, we want to move as fast as possible. Um, and I, I know that's a frustrating answer because it's really hard to predict um, uh, the, these outcomes and, and how long they may take. But uh, it is our singular objective as a company um, in terms of improving the, increasing the health of the public square that, that we're hosting. Yep, thank you. Uh, so how do you, is there any way that users and third parties can verify whether or not their political standards or judgments are embedded accidentally into Twitter's algorithms? I mean, I guess I'm asking is, are your algorithm, algorithms publicly available for, for independent coders to assess whether there is bias whether it's intended or unintended? Not, not today, but that is, a, that is an area we are looking at. And uh, we'd love to be more open as a company, um, including uh, our, our algorithms and how they work. Uh, we don't yet know the best way to do that. Uh, we, we also have to consider, um, in some cases, when we um, are more clear about how our algorithms work, it allows for gaming of the yeah. system, so people taking advantage of it. Yep. Um, so we need to be cognizant of that. And it's not a blocker by, by any means. Oh, I understand. We'd love for it to be open, uh, but, but that's, a big, um, that's a big understanding that we need, to, we need to understand how to crack. Yeah, I totally get that. I could see where if the algorithms were there, then smart people are going to find ways to subvert that, right? Yep. And there's some, probably some proprietariness there that you may have a competitor in the future named something else, and you don't want your processes out there. I totally respect although, that. I, although this is an area we don't want to compete. We do not want to compete on health. Yeah, okay. um, we want to share whatever we find. Okay. Uh, and I think many people have said, you know, all of us, whether we know it or not, have some inherent biases based on our, where we grew up, what our background is, what our life experiences are. So I'm kind of, I'm really interested in how, how you recruit, you know, to, to your company. Because I think, um, and you, I mean, Obviously, the tech industry has had some criticism about its level of diversity, uh, but I, I think it would be important to kind of get your feel for if you're going to have you're going to avoid groupthink and you're creating algorithms. How do you how do you recruit? And I mean, you're not going to ask somebody, "Hey, are you a pro Trump or against Trump?" I get that, right? But you want to have I, I would argue you want to have people from everywhere, different races, men, women, different political views. Because our imp my impression is is like diversity. It is in some respects in certain industries fine as long as it's not political diversity. So how do you, can you give me a sense of how you kind of build a team? Yeah, th this is an active conversation within the company right now. We, we recognize that we need to decentralize our workforce out of San Francisco. Um, not everyone wants to be in San Francisco, not everyone wants to work in San Francisco, not everyone can afford to even come close to living in San Francisco, and it's not fair. So we're considering ways of how we hire more broadly across every geography across this country and also around the world, sure. and being a, more, a lot more flexible. It's finally the case that technology is enabling more of that. And uh, we're really excited about this, and I'm personally excited to not consider San Francisco to be a headquarters, but to be a more distributed company. Yeah, I just want to say I think it's very important to make sure that uh, that companies like yours do get a variety of in, of perspectives within your employee base. Thank you. Thanks for being here.